I really pictured doing this in the daylight when I could have some natural light coming in, but um, it's winter. So I want to talk about this ideal of forgetting our loved ones after they pass away. This is a big thing that we wrestle with. And it's a reason why it's really hard for people to move forward because every time, even for me personally, when it's been six months since, since I lost my daughter and if I go too long without thinking about her or I feel good for too long or I have just something even big happen that like I have a lot of joy and I don't think of her, then you have this like inward struggle or battle of feeling some guilt maybe for being happy for feeling joy and you think, am I forgetting her? And you get mad at yourself. And it's these emotions, if you're not careful, can really begin to get you stagnant in your recovery. And this morning when I was doing my Bible time and spending time with Jesus, I just heard him really clearly saying, it's okay to move forward. You need to move forward. I want you to move forward. He didn't say forget her. He said, move forward. Stop dwelling on the things that you're dwelling on. And with Delaney and with her death, um, there are things that I have struggled with letting go of. Things come up, memories or things I said or the way that I parented her and Satan wants to tell me lies about how I am as a mom and he wants to point out all the things that I did wrong, um, all the imperfections, because none of us are perfect at parenting, right? And he wants me to believe that I'm somehow responsible for her loss. And um, all of these verses came to mind today about letting go and moving forward. And so I wanna share some I am doing like a Bible Bible in a year reading. So I was in Genesis and there's a story of God destroying two cities, um, Saddam and Gomorrah. And there was a man named Lot that was God considered righteous enough to save him and his family before he was going to destroy these cities. He was destroying the city not um, for, not out of evil, but out of righteousness and justice. So the destroying of these cities was to serve justice because the people there were so unrighteous. But Lot and his family were spared and they were, the angel told them to leave and to not look back. And as they were walking away, Lot's wife looked back. And it said she became a pillar of salt, which I believe means she died. Um, and it's a warning for us not to look back. That harm, harm can come to us if we keep looking back, if we keep looking behind us. And for me, I realized harm can definitely come to me if I keep dwelling and thinking about all the things that I did wrong as a mom. And then this is mentioned again in Luke. Luke 17, 
32 and 33, it says, remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to keep his life will lose it. And whoever loses his wife will preserve it. You know, I've, I have lost my life. <laughs> Definitely lost my life. Um, but this verse, you know, says that even though I've, even though I've lost my life as I knew it, that there is still life for me. And then as I'm thinking about more verses about not dwelling on the past, immediately Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 come to mind, which have just been put in front of me so many times in the last week even, even before that, but again in the last week. And it says, do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not, will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And as I'm processing this, it's like by letting go, by not dwelling, we are allowing God to make a path through our life, the wilderness of our life. You think of the um, recovery process from losing my daughter. You very much feel like you're lost in a forest or, you know, you imagine being lost and you're just like, you keep going and you think, did I see that tree? And you, you're going in circles and you're not getting anywhere. That can be very much what things have felt like. And, or you think about being in a desert and, and not being able to find water. That would be another good example of what our lives have felt like the last six months. And here God is saying that if we can not dwell on the former things, that we will give him the opportunity to make a path through the wilderness for us and give us water in the desert. And next, God brings to mind Philippians. He's literally bringing these verses to my mind as I'm like thinking through this this morning. And these verses just, psh, psh. that's the one when you know you're really hearing from God when he's sending you scripture. And this verse has been a favorite of mine for years. I love this verse. It is Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting what lies behind, again, and in this context for me, I know that God has plans for me and that God intends to use me. And Satan will try to stop that. He wants me to dwell on the past, like I said before. Um, but God plans to use me to further his kingdom, to share his love, to share his goodness, um, to share his hope. And I can't do that. I can't fulfill that mission if I'm stuck in the past. So we don't forget our loved ones. Absolutely not. We do not forget them. And there's so many ways that you can honor your loved one's memory. Um, one thing that I do is I have this notebook that I can write letters to Delaney. I know she's not going to read them, but it's very healing and it's a way for me to store memories. Um, I try to be intentional about talking about her with my girls. And there'll be other things that I know God will bring to mind that we can do to honor her, you know, celebrate birthdays and things like that. Uh, but you do not have to be stuck because of your fear of forgetting. You can absolutely choose to move forward. Um, that's all I got.